Hello, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to that's the other hand, and welcome to this week's Facebook Live. Um, I'm joined today by Alex, the features editor, and Moira from our design team. Um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're here to talk about cruise holidays, inspired by a trip that Alex and I took this week um, mm. to the MS Magellan, uh, which is a, a cruise and maritime voyages cruise ship, which um, comes into Dundee fairly frequently and goes um, cruising around mm. uh, the Baltic and uh, Norway and the Scottish Isles. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it was uh, I think it was bigger than I expected actually because I, I yeah. live kind of in the beside the river where it comes in and it never looks that big and then obviously when you're there looking it's, at the ship. It goes up doesn't it? It yeah. does. And it was and I was surprised because they took us around, it's very lovely, they took us around all the cabins and we started with the ones on the inside all the way up to the kind of top tier suites and we, there were about three or four or five floors in between the two, weren't there? We were yeah, using the lifts to get about and stuff. It's quite it's substantial. It's uh, yeah, surprisingly large, and and also the obviously the facilities and things on board. There's a spa on board, and there's yeah. multiple bars, and there's a yeah. casino. And, yeah, there was a library. We found a copy of People's Friend Annual in 2017. Indeed, we did. We'll need to get them an updated <laughs> copy um, when, when next we are there. Um, and in fact, uh, passengers were just embarking when we were getting our little tour because they were just going off to do. Yeah. I think it was, it's the, the Norway and the Isles one, isn't it, that they were going to do? Yeah, they were up to, I think they were up to Orkney first, weren't they? I think mm -hmm. it was the next stop for them. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was brilliant. It was, and we got the little um, onboard newsletter for the day when we when we got on as well, mm -hmm. with everything you could do around the area and weather and stuff like that and all the ship stuff. And that was, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, it was, it was good to see actually that it was promoting things to do in Dundee. Obviously, the boat yeah. came, I think, up from Newcastle. Because um, we were speaking to that Geordie chap who had yeah. who had been on it and uh, in the library, yeah. And so they, I mean, they were handing out information about going to see the V&A and going to the Verdant Works, which is a museum here, and the McManus Galleries, which is just outside our office. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's really good. Yeah. Um, you've been on a cruise, Moira. You were. Yes. Uh, <laughs> where did you go? We went to the Bahamas. We flew out to. Miami and picked the boat up in Fort Lauderdale and it was a seven night cruise aboard the Allure of the Seas, the Royal Caribbean ship and it was just amazing, it was really out this world, it was so vast and huge and so much to see and do. Mm. I, mean, I thought a cruise was meant to be really <clears throat> relaxing and lying by the pool <laughs> and sipping cocktails and things but could have been further from the truth. I mean, you could do that if you like, but there's so much to fit in to these seven nights and there's so much to do on the ship. There's shows and so much shows and things to do and like we mm. say, spas mm. and the food is amazing. Mm. Um, and all the ports of call that you go to, you have to mm. have the crack of dawn because you're disembarking about eight mm. in the morning. So <laughs> time you get up, have your shower, a nice literally breakfast and then disembark and a whole new country you're seeing for the day that you've never been to before. So you're there all day, yeah. you come back on the ship, another shower, get ready for <laughs> dinner and a show. Another six course it's meal. Just, oh, you're trying to coordinate <laughs> everything, get that, that show and then when that finishes, you go to this and you know, there was just so much to see and do and the staff Busy. were yeah. wonderful. Yeah. They, they really were. And yeah. They just tended to your every need. Yeah. Um, yeah. They were when we were on, weren't they? Yeah. Everyone was saying hello and everybody was asking how you were doing and stuff. It was fabulous. Yeah, yeah very they, attentive and very friendly. Yeah. They said yeah. they had like a, on the ship, on the, on the Magellan. 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 I'm going to go with Magellan. Okay. <laughs> Thoughts on a postcard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were, I think they had like a two to one passenger to staff ratio and they were quite keen on keeping that because it meant service could be kept up but it was just amazing. Yeah. The food is, was amazing as oh, well. Yeah. A lot of different themed nights, you know, yeah, an yeah. American barbecue evening and you have a Chinese evening and yeah. a Thai evening or yeah. Mexican, mm. you know, so there's something different every night and there's so many restaurants to yeah. eat in as well. Yeah. So they cater for absolutely everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you'd have to work hard to be bored. Oh I think. yeah, so yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, and we've been joined by Caroline, who's in Australia. Hello, Caroline. Hi, Caroline. Um, who's who's going off on two cruises next year? Good choice. Um, yeah. It's true, and, and in that kind of area, they do the cruises obviously between Australia and New Zealand, but they also do sort of Southeast Asia. Um, you go mm. up to 
uh, Indonesia and mm. Thailand and those mm. sorts of places. So that'd be quite interesting. Because we were chatting to the guy, the tour operator, and you were saying they were looking into, because obviously this year, uh, next year is going to be a DC Thompson official cruise that leaves from, that leaves from Dundee aboard the, the ship that we were on. And they were also looking into um, the, the kind of cruises where you can fly around the world to Australia and then cruise the way back. Or yeah. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Really just... A lot of cruises are like that now. You yeah. fly out to pick up the ship and then yeah. you take it from there. So. I think we did that in the Mediterranean. Did you do that on your cruise in the Med as well? Like, yeah, we flew to Venice. Yeah. And picked a boat in Venice. Yeah, yeah. We flew to Mallorca and then picked it up from there and I think it came back to the same point. Mm-hmm. It, was a nice, it was a really nice way of getting a taste of all these different places, yeah, and you don't—you honestly can't tell. Like we were saying, you can't tell that it's moving at all. No, it's so stable. No. And you think with the size of it, the mess it could actually <laughs> float. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My parents went on one around the um, Cape of Good something, the South African, South American Good. one. Oh, Good Good Hope. Hope. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is famously, the seas are famously quite rough, um, but the ship. Had the stabilizers going the whole time, so they didn't. They so they didn't really feel too much of it at all. No. They had to kind of go into port one evening. But for people that are worried about being seasick on a cruise, it's really not oh, a problem. Not right? yeah. no. I don't think you get a worse stretch of water than that. No, I, I think mm-hmm. there's there's many a shipwreck around yeah. that way. <laughs> so if they could sail through that and not even really notice, yeah. then it's yeah, uh, yeah. There's even other little touches as well. Like so the we had our own maid for the the week we were there, um, so and she remembered all our names. You know, mm. Um, mm. Really, actually really attentive, and every second night mm. um, we talk like a towel animal on mm. the bed, oh, yes. so I think we've had a, had a rabbit, and then a, an elephant, and then a <laughs> orangutan hanging from the curtain rail. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was so tickled by these animals that my, my daughter gave me one one for Mother's Day. <laughs> so, a little, a little monkey. <laughs> and I can't nice. bear to take it apart to use the towels so they just love it so much. I was going to say, these, these were, this is a towel and like a face yes. cloth, this is a present, but yes. you, you won't dismantle it. No, I won't. still hanging up in the bedroom and find a place. <laughs> and we saw some crackers on the, on the, on the cruise. Oh, yeah, there was some good ones. Wednesday, yeah. Didn't we? yeah, there was the, the frog and the... Uh, and swans. an elephant. And the swans and the elephant as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think there's some, it sounds like Caroline's saying that she's going up from Vancouver. Oh, yeah. uh, I presume you're going up north, Caroline. That's a great, I think there's a couple of places where it's actually, I think cruising is actually genuinely the best place to see the area. So the, the sort of British Columbian coast, I imagine, and, and up to, I know Alaska is a really popular place to go cruising. Yeah. And obviously the one next year that's going up to Norway, the fjords are, are brilliant for cruising because they're so deep. And such a great way of experiencing it. Yeah, I, I'm really keen to see all of that. So yeah, when they were talking yeah. about the itinerary for the, the 2020 cruise, uh, yeah. it does sound, and also some of the islands. I mean, I've never really been to many Scottish islands. Yeah. Uh, so the the chance to go up and kind of do both at the same time yeah, is pretty yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were thinking about maybe going even further afield to the Faroe Islands or Iceland and stuff like that. Yeah. As well. So it's a really great way of seeing some. Yeah, yeah. 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 I really, I remember going through the med and, um, you know, you would go to sleep and then you would just wake up um, somewhere new and or if, yeah. there, if there was anything interesting that you were passing, I remember the captain shouting out over the, yeah. over the tannoy that there was something on the starboard side or something, you would rush out onto the deck and see it. No, it's cool, it's still, yeah. Yeah, it's still got a lot of romance about it, I think. Yeah, I think it does. I think it gets something of a bad rep, actually, for being mm. uh, the, the holiday of choice for older people. Mm, but I don't yeah. think that's necessarily the case because mm. the the one that I was on, there were a fair few people, kind of mm. reasonably young people, mm-hmm. just mm. enjoying the holiday. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it's not necessarily a floating retirement home. Yeah, and I think one of the genius things about it is, as we learn on Wednesday, um, is that it's really it's really easy to manage your costs on a cruise mm. as well. Like sometimes you go on holiday and you don't know how much money to take, you don't know how much. You're going to spend and stuff like that and you can be you know you can spend an evening every day just kind of balancing out your cash and what you've got left and how much you can afford to spend the next day but with a cruise because you, you can literally book you know your foods included you could book yeah, your you drinks packages pay. as well yeah. you could sort out your excursions the whole time and then you could well it could be as cheap or as expensive as you like i mean the sky's yeah. the limit on these mm-hmm. cruises yeah yeah you, yeah, know, you can yeah. pay extra to eat at the more exclusive restaurants if you like but yeah. there's so much choice with the ones that you were allowed in you didn't feel the need yeah yeah to, there's there's no steerage know. passengers these days. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> 
No, and even the, all of the cabins were, were, were comfortable and roomy, yeah. weren't they? The, the inside ones, because we were we stayed on an inside one. We went on that screen, and it was great. It was it was yeah. two twin beds, a TV, a good size bathroom, and everything. It was really yeah. really comfortable. Well, we were surprised because when we booked the holiday, they said we were going to be overlooking Central Park. Mm. I said there was a Central <laughs> Park on our ship. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Um, so we were meant to be overlooking Central Park, but when mm. we actually got there, we got an outside one. So oh, it was just great. We had a little That's balcony nice. with a little yeah. table and chairs, and yeah, oh, it was yeah. just great. Just come into the ports, you know, and seeing the countries from yeah. that view. Yeah, you know, come yeah. into them and yeah. You got the, the welcome you got from them was they play music and yeah. <laughs> welcome you, you know. But it's really, really stunning. Yeah, yeah, and you get you get the chance to meet a lot of people from a yeah. lot of different countries as well. Mm -hmm. um, but not just amongst the the passengers, but the staff as well. Yeah. they tend to come from quite a lot of different places. Yeah, That's definitely right. they yeah. did, didn't they? Because yeah. the, the chap that was showing us around during the week, he was from Serbia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember on the cruise that I took around the Mediterranean, the, the guy who was kind of our uh, waiter, effectively, in the, the evening meals was from Honduras. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's what we were. We went to Rotan, mm. uh, to a sloth sanctuary. Oh, that's cool. what my daughter's daft on, sloth. <laughs> so, <laughs> she'd booked that one through Facebook. Yeah. Um, so that was only one we booked ourselves. The rest that we booked through the, the ship. Yeah, yeah. So, but some of them could be quite expensive as well. It's up to you if you want to try and book yeah. them yourself, or yeah, just yeah. hop in a cab and discover yeah. it yourself. Yeah. So it's up to you which yeah. way you want to go. We did a bit of both, I think, as yeah. well. And I think the really thing that's not, the thing that's really nice about it as well is I think traditionally cruises always used to involve when you went to dinner, you would always you would often sit at the same table. But a lot of the modern cruises, you, you can, there are places where you can yeah. do that, or if you don't want to do that, if you want to just go and eat in a couple or by yourself, you can do that as well. Yeah. But my, my grandma used to cruise um, quite a lot in her, in her later years because it was a great holiday to go on by yourself mm -hmm. as well. They used to have bridge clubs and stuff like that. She would go mm -hmm. on, get straight involved in the bridge, and then just, she had sort of ready-made friends. Mm -hmm. So because of all the activities, it is literally a holiday that you could just go on whether you were with somebody or not, and still have yeah. a really good time. So. Um, we've been joined by Lorraine, who's also an Australian. Hi, Hello, Lorraine. Hi, Lorraine. Um, and she's been to Europe to um, go river cruising, which is, uh, I guess, the the other one. You can go, I know that there's cruises that leave here that go up the river Volga. Um, oh, right, wow. And to St. Petersburg and yeah. that sort of thing, which yeah. um, would be spectacular. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It must yeah. be great. And the Rhine's the other popular one, mm. isn't it, that you see that advertised on ITV3. <laughs> in the but that looks really nice as well. Yeah. They're quite small ships, I think, too, aren't they? So mm -hmm. everybody gets good views. So, yeah. And uh, I, as the chap was telling us, um, a lot of people will go on the cruises, and while they're there, before they disembark, they'll book again for, mm. for next year, for the mm. next voyage, um, mm. because they're so they're so much of a, a fan of what's going on. And it's even if it's the same voyage. They'll just do it again. They'll come back on the ship. Um, the guy that we were talking to, the the passenger, he yeah. was saying he'd been on that ship, the yeah. Magellan, three times. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was quite. Um, it was it was lovely to chat to him. He did, yeah, he did give us a bit of an insight into what it was like being a passenger. But unfortunately, we were on a tour, um, and the rest of our tour group <laughs> got away from us at that point, and we got yeah. a little bit lost on the cruise ship then, which was a bit of a worry. Yeah, because it's when you. Yeah, I kind of appreciated how big it was when you were trying to find other people. Like, and when you knew that it was departing in about an hour and a half. <laughs> and, then, yes. and then somebody downstairs had our passport. So like, oh. Basically, Alex and I nearly wound up in Norway. Uh, <laughs> it was an event trip. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the DC Thompson cruise, yeah. which is being run with Cruise and Maritime Voyages, the, the company that um, were running the Magellan. This is a feature we did on our back in February. So that's the, the best of the Scottish Isles and uh, Norway. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're still taking bookings for that just now. Yeah. Um, although they did say that it's been tremendously popular. It has, yeah. They sold over nearly 900, nearly 900 places on it. And I think they've only got um, just over 1,000, under 1,200, I think it was. So, yeah. yeah. So that's still on a, as, as far as we were, that's still on a buy one, get one half price for tickets on that. So, presumably, I was tempted. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. 
and um, we'll put some more information up about that. I'll put the link to the DC Thompson travel page where you can read more about the itinerary and about the boat. You can you can see how big it is and how easily Alex and I got lost. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that I mean that does sound really good, and it's obviously it's it's the DC Thompson cruise, so okay. it's uh, there'll, there'll be plenty of up to date people's friends in the, in the library. <laughs> and they promised they were going to have a special desk, didn't they? For people that had booked through DC Thompson. They would have special customer care representatives available for any kind of queries and stuff that you mm -hmm. had as well, which sounded really, which sounded really good because there's always a lot of questions about mm -hmm. what you can do and stuff. Yeah, I think particularly if you've never been on a cruise, I yeah, think if, yeah. If you go on, you can be a bit overwhelmed, kind of like what you yeah. were saying. There's yes. so much to do, and oh, yes. the, the boat's doing so many things yes. that you're kind yeah. of like, what what am I yeah. supposed to do with myself? <laughs> <laughs> um, in the Mediterranean, it's probably easy because if you just if you can't figure anything out, you just sit down in the sun for a little yeah. while. And, yeah. uh, but maybe in the fjords, that's a bit different because you might need the, the thermal yeah. underwear. <laughs> yeah, we were on a ferry, and I noticed they had them on the on the on the Magellan as well. But they um, when we were on a ferry in Alaska, they had uh, little heating units uh, on the outside areas and I, I spotted a few of those around because there weren't very many people on the deck when they were docked in Dundee. No, it was about three. On a rather chilly summer, yeah. but yeah, but no, it was nice, it was nice that the option was there that they would keep you warm yeah. if you were outside, but yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was interesting. I, I remember when I wrote the feature about it, I looked back into the history of cruising a little bit and I didn't realise that apparently it was quite common for them to do school cruises back in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We found out that um, Karen from My Weekly who went with us and then Vaughn, who's on the features team, actually did these school cruises where they mm -hmm. kind of retrofitted um, boats from the, that have been usually serving boats from the war. And then yeah, troop out. ships and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they took uh, groups of kids out to the, into the Baltic and to Russia and stuff like that. Some yeah. amazing trips. Like, but nearly like eight or nine hundred school children on one boat. Mm -hmm. Goodness me. That's, I mean, I can't imagine <laughs> supervising that can't no. have been a lot of fun, but as a, as a school trip, I mean, uh, Hannah, who was with us, and, and myself were talking kind of wistfully about going to places <laughs> like Falkland, which is in Fife, it's about 25 miles from here. I was just there last weekend. And thinking about previous generations who got to, to poodle around Europe in a boat yeah. um, as a school trip, which was a bit... That sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah that sounds really amazing. I'm, I'm a bit sad that I missed out on that. Um, <laughs> Lorraine is speaking about the staff on the boat, said that the staff came from all over Europe on the river yeah. cruise so they could practically go home for the night. Yeah. Uh, they're probably not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it was such an eclectic collection of people and stuff. <laughs> It's you know you're not gonna you're not gonna be lonely on a cruise. That's no, it's no, not. certainly not. Sometimes you go to sometimes you go quite far away. You can almost get a bit homesick. I think after a while because you yeah. feel you can feel a little bit isolated. Mm -hmm. but you would definitely never get that feeling on cruise. No, so no we better. when I went on the one that uh, I went on with my better half, we were away for fourteen nights, which is actually it's quite a long time. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. it really didn't seem like that. No. It seemed to yeah. fly in, and you it's were kind of packing in so much. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you're Going off the ship about half eight in the morning, and you're not coming back till about five yeah. or six at night. Yeah, and then it's just jam packed for things to do, and you want to make the most of all these countries you want to explore. Yeah, you yeah. Know, you want to fit as much in as you possibly can. Yeah. So it's like you're hopping on cabs and jump on buses and. Yeah, yeah. I bet I'm not surprised if that's yeah. one of the reasons some people rebook the same cruises because they probably think, oh, I wish they got yeah. that excursion, that excursion. Yeah. Maybe they made friends at dinner or something as well, and they want to come back and meet them again. Well, we just saw one hotel in mm. Nassau in the Bahamas, the mm. Atlantis Hotel, mm. where Michael Jackson used to stay. He mm. had uh, his own suite there, and it was actually a bridged part of the hotel. That was his suite that he used oh, wow. to stay in. Yeah. So, and it had like um, fish aquariums. It was two or three aquariums that you could walk around, yeah. and they were linked between the two hotels. Yeah. So that took us a whole day just to go around that one hotel <laughs> and see the, this vast aquarium. Um, so we didn't really see much else of NASA, yeah. really. But, yeah, so plenty um, to go back and see. Oh, it's, it's just beautiful, yeah. absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's definitely so, encouraged me, I think, to book a cruise at some point. Yeah. 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 Thinking about re rescheduling the honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe get the cruise going instead. Yeah. It's just seeing other people live as well. I mean, yeah. Rotan was an eye opener. I mean, um, really quite 
quite humbled by it. Yeah, you know, they yeah. had a really good tour guide and he was just telling us the price of things and also telling us to be important. Yeah. And they're going to have to go to mainland Mexico yeah. and to get medical treatment and things, you know, things that we take for granted here. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've no idea what they're living with in places like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. they're so friendly. Like yeah. he was a really great guy taking us round in his Range Rover, yeah. you know, exploring the area and then taking us to the Sloth Sanctuary. That was a yeah. highlight of the trip. That's, that's, that's yeah, amazing. he yeah. got to hold one. Yeah. Oh. That, yeah. <laughs> and they put you in these little monkeys and they're jumping all over your head and things. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's something you're not going to be doing every day, so you may as well take oh, advantage. Presumably not. <laughs> Uh, the fjords the fjords really impressed me we were i mean we were there on a different kind of holiday but we ended up cruising from one fjord to another um and that's just staggering scenery yeah. because the, the mountains just rise straight out of the straight out of the water mm -hmm. and you see these really like improbable little houses kind of speckled six seven hundred meters up yeah. on the side of the hill and thinking to me I just thought, I wasn't sleepwalking. <laughs> just, just look at it we're 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 <laughs> That's phenomenal. Yeah. Just how they've managed to build, how the Norwegians even managed to build towns and everything in there. And when we did the, the famous one where you stop at, I think it's called Flom, and there's a railway that runs up through the mountains up onto the plateau and stuff. And I think, I'm not sure if that's one of the stops on this cruise. I think this goes to the more sort of southern fjords where, the, where it's just stunning, but there's, there's just so much to see. It's absolutely otherworldly and yeah. really it's pretty special. Um, and because it's going up next year, it's going up in. Um, Quite sure what the dates. I think it's June, mid to late June. They'll be out for the sort of summer solstice. It's going to be. It's going to be in Sky for the oh, summer it's solstice. It's going to be Sky. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But you're going to be benefiting if you were on that cruise. You'd be benefiting from seeing Norway at a time of year when it's light until goodness knows when. But yeah. It's not properly getting dark. So. Yeah. You're talking about sort of very one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. It'll still be light. Yeah. 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 Great time to go. Yeah. Um, as I say, we'll put the details of that up. I'll put them in the. The comments there, um, but we will leave that so I can go and speak to my travel agent, and uh, <laughs> we will see you next week. So thank you for joining us, and uh, have a good weekend. Yep. See you later. See you later. Bye. 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 <laughs>